Akash, we cannot hear you. No, we cannot hear you yet. Why don't you work on that and you can do the closing prayer for now. We, um, someone else will pray and we'll get started, okay? Uh, meanwhile, work on that thing. Prami? Okay. Starting Prajastavatali, we'll get started. Okay, okay. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. Lord, please let us know about you and learn about you. Make us learn about you, please. Please, God, so can you. Make us learn about you and give us some ideas of Christmas so we can do those ideas in Christmas dance. I pray this my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dali. Um, so, yeah, I think we have, we have, we don't have Serena yet, anyway. Yeah. So how are you guys? How are you guys doing? How was your week? It was good? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So did you get some time to, um, read last week's story? Yes. yes. Good job. Yeah. So um, before we move into this week's story, um, prayer requests. Take out your books and write down the requests. So, any update on Akansh's um, class, or should we still pray about it? Akansh can type it in the chat, right? Yeah. Akansh, we cannot hear you, but you can just um, send it over in the chat, okay? So, we can. Your update about machine class. Should we still pray about it, or you have already joined it, or? I think he'll reconnect so that he'll have a better connection. Uh, we don't have Serena with us yet, so we'll we'll take her request in the lab. But we have been praying about Serena's art class and her um, new house as well. So let us. I don't know if there's any update on that. So we'll just keep keep that point for this week. And Akansh, okay. Um, pray. You can also pray. Okay. So I think we still have to pray for Akansh's class. Then. Last, um, as usual, we will be praying about Christmas till um, we are done with Christmas and the church in general. So you can keep that point as well. Other than this, any other personal prayer requests? Everything's... Um, so any help at school or any, you know, like any other personal prayer request? No? Okay. So we'll just keep um, those same points as well. And uh, last week we've been praying about um, national disasters, right? Like, so now any natural disasters. So this week, 
we will be playing about okay we have said enough so this week um we will be praying about what what do you want, guys want to pray like in general akash i think you have to act it out so a general a general prayer request like uh, apart from a personal prayer request and a prayer request from church you know um any i i mean anyone wants to pray about any particular thing sir, in general sir can you auntie mm sorry na my video is not working can i restart my laptop happen then like more time yeah tell me go ahead and plus i read the the chapter you told me to yeah good job so we were just uh, taking down the prayer request so should we still pray about the house and your class your art class or is there any update on that uh by art class it's not really going on we're just doing action but at our house nothing nothing on our house updates oh you still want to you still want us to pray about it or pray still pray about it okay yeah okay we'll pray some until um there's a proper day no problem okay okay meanwhile you can just restart sarina no problem okay auntie okay if you guys don't have a specific um any topic in your mind i am thinking this week in general we will pray about all the pastors you know in in the world in the us in india however it works so this week our general prayer topic is we will be praying about all the men and women of god okay all the pastors um so what about pastors we pray that god will guide them lead them um spiritually physically and financially god will bless these ministries and god will open up new doors for revelations and basically you know if the pastor is nice the church will flourish so so we will in general pray about pastors and their families their protection and you know especially in this corona times crazy times and financially or you know even now physically a lot of them are suffering so let's just uh, pray about them remember about them in our prayers okay so this week's topic is pastors and their families okay this week's prayer topic so the whole week we'll be praying about that and uh, we will also pray about uh, sarina's class in house and akam's machine class as well so those are specific prayer requests okay so good job guys on reading your bible portions for the week um that is definitely the aim you know like from sunday school we will be only giving you like we will only learn small bits and pieces we'll only have a glimpse of the original story but um you have to start reading your bibles from now okay so that is that that is a habit that you have to cultivate from now so yeah we can say serena now so today's for today's class we will be studying about a very 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 interesting character um and it is elijah prophet elijah so any guesses on where the story of elijah starts in the bible serena uh maybe in israel maybe the king uh, i forgot the city name oh. but the the no, bad king asking um yeah i should have been more specific i meant which book in the bible oh. is the story located in you can take a guess okay i think it is ruth or judges um so the book of ruth is about ruth okay so there's ruth and there's um her mother-in-law and her husband and her future husband 
So it's not root. And Jagjus, okay. Jagjus, I think. Is it an Isaiah? No, Tali. Isaiah is a bad idea. <laughs> no, I think Isaiah is also a good guess. But oh, anyway, Anthony, can you hear us? Yeah, ka. now it's fine. Auntie? Yeah, now I can hear you, Akansh. Akansh, I was asking if anyone can guess um, which book in the Old Testament has the story of Prophet Elijah. Prophet Elijah? Mm -hmm. Elijah would be Judges, 1st or 2nd Samuel. For pretty Judges. Close. Pretty close. That's a pretty close guess. But Elijah is in the book of First Kings. First Kings? Yes. I thought that was they, I thought it was Saul. Those name it's in where? Remember when we learned about when we've it's been in where? First Kings. First Kings. Uh, Nana, you need to mute. So whenever the learning no, 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 it's Kings, First Kings. I've already told it's in First Kings, okay? So, yes, the, the book first of Kings, kings? First and Second Kings, is about all the kings. But you remember how it's in Israel? Like, whenever there's a king, God also sends a prophet so that the prophet will give whatever um, God's thought is to the people and to the king. So, obviously, there was a king named Ahab um, in this before this, like before Elijah enters, um, there's a king named Ahab and um, his wife is Jezebel. So these two people did like, were super, super, super evil in the eyes of the Lord. So God sends Elijah to Israel, okay, for the people of Israel and to warn the king. So it might be a little surprising, but um, still, we see the story of Elijah in the book of First Kings in chapter 17, 1 7. So, if you could please turn your Bibles to um, the book of First Kings, chapter 17. First Kings, chapter 17. I want to show you something. Should I show it now or at the end of the Zoom? At the end, Tali. We'll have okay. some time to discuss at the end. Then we can show it. Okay. So, so, regarding obedience, we will be learning not one, but two. two um, we will be learning from two people today. So, both of the people, we can find them in chapter 17. We still haven't come we are still dealing with the topic of obedience. So even today we will be learning obedience from two people in the same chapter. Okay. Is it in seventeen? Yes, it's seventeen. Prami. You had a question? She was guessing which two men were in chapter seventeen. Oh, okay. Um, I don't think you have to guess now because before we dive into each of the words, we will watch a small video that will give you a glimpse of uh, who are the two people we'll be learning from today, okay? So let's watch a video. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Someone was. Calling. I just wanted to show show you why, how I decorated my book. Yeah, not now. In the last, okay. Elijah the prophet spoke to Ahab, mm -hmm. the evil king of Israel, and gave him a message. There will be no dew or rain for the next few years unless I command it. This will certainly happen. Oh no. Then God told Elijah to go to a place near a stream. God said the ravens would provide food for Elijah to eat. So Elijah obeyed God. The ravens brought him bread and meat and he drank water from the stream. 
After a while, the stream dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then God told Elijah to go to a small village. God said a widow in the town would provide for Elijah. So Elijah obeyed God. When Elijah got to the gate of the city, he saw a widow gathering wood. He called to her, please bring me a little water so I can drink. As she went to get it, he added, please bring me a piece of bread too. But the women told Elijah, I don't have bread. I only have a little bit of flour and oil. The woman and her son were planning to eat one more meal before they died from hunger. Don't be afraid, Elijah said. Go and prepare the meal, but first bring me a small loaf of bread. Then make some for yourself and your son. God says you will not run out of flour or oil until rain comes again. So the woman prepared the meal. She, Elijah, and everyone in her household had enough to eat, and she did not run out of flour or oil, just like the Lord had said. Sometime later, the woman's son got sick, and he stopped breathing. Elijah took the boy upstairs and laid him on the bed. He cried out to God, stretched himself out over the boy three times, and cried out to God again. Lord, my God, please let this boy live again, Elijah prayed. The Lord listened to Elijah, and the boy's life came into him again. He was alive. Elijah led the boy to his mother. She said to Elijah, Now I know you are a man of God and the Lord really does speak through you. Yeah, so those are the two characters we'll be learning from today. One is Elijah and two is the widow um, at Zarephath that has given Elijah a place to stay in. But I was actually watching you guys while you were watching the video and, you know, especially at the part where Elijah prayed for the dead boy and he rose to life again, don't you think it's pretty exciting? Like, it's an impossible thing and God has done it right. But I don't know, I, I, I didn't see any of you guys get excited or praise God or something like that. But for me, it's, it's like... I don't, I cannot even imagine a God is a God of impossibilities. He can do anything. So when Elijah prayed for the dead boy, he just rose to life. So that is like something I cannot understand and I cannot praise God enough. Right. So let's go in a sequence. Um, let's not skip and do however we are doing every week. So if you can turn your Bibles to First uh, Kings chapter 17. It's in the video. We will um, learn about it in detail. Chapter 17. So like we've already told, the context to when Elijah, um, when we see Elijah is, we don't learn about where, where or how Elijah was born, how his childhood was, or if he was a good prophet of God or what he was. We don't have any, any details about Elijah. But he just comes out of nowhere here in chapter 17. So before he comes, what happens is, like I said, um, Israel was being ruled by a very, very um, evil king called Ahab. And his wife was very evil as well. Her name is Jezebel. And it's, they really did some nasty, nasty things in the eye of the Lord. And the Lord was very angry with them. And as usual, you know, like uh, the people of Israel sinned again. So the Lord wanted to send his prophet to speak to the king and as well as people and teach them a lesson. Okay, so he sends Elijah. So in chapter 17, we see Elijah come just out of nowhere. And um, he goes to Ahab, okay. And he says that because because you are doing such bad things i i stand in the presence of god of israel and say to you that there will not be any dew or rain in this land 
for the next few years, for the coming few years, okay? So what does it mean? So what if there's no rain? Why should a prophet of God come, um, go to the king and say that they will not, because you haven't obeyed the Lord of God, there will not be any rain. Serena? So that the king can repent? Yes. That's no the main idea, but what actually happens if there's no rain? Uh, we die. Yeah, that's one way to say it. Um, Akash? So if there's no rain, like in the story, it said that if you went to a stream, there was water, but since there was no rain, it started to dry up. So I think that also the people in the village or the people in the kingdom, they did not have water either because they would either collect it from the stream, drink from the stream, or they would like collect from the rain. Yeah, so there's no water, right? So if there's no, so if there's no rain, then they they won't have water to survive. Yes, Sandy. They would not be able to grow crops to survive. Exactly. Yes. So if there's no rain, there's no agriculture, right? There are no crops. If there are no crops, there's no food, and obviously, like Akanksh said, there's no water to drink as well. It's, it's a severe, severe drought. Like, they'll not have food, they'll not have water, and it's going to be really bad. So that is, that actually, you know, like when they have no other hope and they don't even have something to eat, um, people will obviously, you know, when they don't have option, they will look up, up to God. So maybe that was God's plan. And um, you see how Elijah was a prophet and out of nowhere, we don't know what his background was, but when God told him something, he knew Ahab was really powerful. He knew Ahab was really evil and that he didn't have any morals or ethics, but without any fear, he wasn't scared to go to the king and tell that, see, you are doing a really bad thing. So the Lord is going to punish you. So that's really, um, even to our friends or, you know, you know, even that's a really hard thing to tell to somebody, right? But Elijah wasn't scared at all. God told him to tell something and he just went and told it to the king. So what happens next is, uh, interestingly, we will read those verses, but um, after he, he, say, he tells this message to the king, Remember, there is going to be drought, right? Like there will be no food or there will be no water. So Elijah still has to eat and drink, right? So God gives a provision to Elijah. And how that happens, we will see um, from verse 2 through 6. Okay? Uh, Abhi? Can you please read um, chapter 17, verse 2 through 6? All right. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get three hands and turn them eastward and hand this stuff by the brook shirt that is before Jordan. I'm done. Okay. Um, somebody else wants to read? Uh, Serena? Can you please continue from there? Four and five? Yeah, four, five, and six. Okay. And and it shall be that do thou shalt drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, 
steps for he went and dwelt by a brook she writ that is before Jordan and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening and drank and he drank from the brook yeah so pretty interesting right there was drought throughout there was no food and water to the people throughout but god's care is you know really strange he cares for us in ways we cannot even uh, um, understand so even elijah needs to drink and eat in order to be alive right so what god says is god asks elijah to go to um, a care you know a particular place where god did not dry out that spring so there there would be water and we don't know how food is going to come yet because now that we have read the entire story we know that elijah was fed by the ravens but when god told elijah to go to that place um the valley of kerith um it's by the river jordan elijah knew nothing about how he's going to eat how he's going to drink how he's going to survive he's a prophet so he don't know what's go- what's happen what's going to happen next but he just obeyed he trusted god with all his heart even regarding the basic needs right so possibly if he thinks with his mind there is no way he is going to have food there's no way he is going to have water but when god asked him to go to a certain place or when god asked him to do a certain thing he just obeyed and went to that place right so what happened next obviously we have been learning from so many weeks when you choose to obey god when you say whatever he says he'll never leave us right he will definitely provide a solution so what god did was he was drinking because god did not dry out the stream there so he was able to drink water from that stream and the food was sent by ravens you know did, have you ever seen a raven no it is like a crow but it is exactly not a crow i think we can call a raven as a bigger crow like it could be a, a little bit bigger than the regular crows we see can you imagine you know like the ravens were bringing him the ravens were bringing him bread the ravens were bringing him meat and two times a day twice a day it's not like i'm going to give you once every two days and you have to eat that and be full now fresh food like in the morning for lunch and for dinner he's having fresh food two times a day and can you imagine guys the birds the ravens were feeding him god sent ravens to feed elijah so have you ever fed a bird did you feed a bird yeah or I have just you know how it is right i don't I actually fed a bird. I fed a pigeon. Hmm. Yes. So you can pretty much see, right? When you feed a bird, I don't think the bird has so much. You know, it it's not even like a dog, or it's not even like a cat that it can understand something, or I don't know. I don't think birds have a lot of brains, so they just eat whatever you give. and they always are in search of food so that they can eat especially ravens i don't think ravens have a really good um you know sharing capacity so but somehow the ravens were actually god ordered the ravens and god sent ravens to feed elijah so this is one really strange thing about how god cares for us he cares for us and he provides for us in un we never know from which direction the help is going to come but if you trust god and if you obey god 
he is going to send help okay so wherever there is no way god is going to show away right yes yes so um can you guys think of something like this maybe in your lives or maybe in your parents lives or somewhere you have seen or just maybe in the bible where we might think that certain things are impossible but god did it anyway like see there was drought everywhere elijah had no food and water but god told elijah to go to a particular place and then he fed elijah with raven so can you think of some you know something like this how god works in mysterious ways you can just give an example from the bible or if it's from your life it would be more interesting but you know whatever you remember uh, we'll start with uh, suchi in the bible when i read elijah and when god helped him uh prove god was only the one true god and how he sent fire from heaven yeah yes um sandy it's the i uh, it's not anything from my life but i've heard a pastor say it he told a story about a man who went uh, in a ship with a few other people and and then suddenly his engine stopped working on the ship and he there, there's this flag that he waves if there's any emergency but that ship was a new ship so no one came so it, it's been a few days they ate whatever whatever they had and and their water was over so they survived uh, eating like the stuff they can find on after they're out of like when they're out of meat or food to eat the man on the ship prayed to god and god and then immediately after he's done praying like the seagulls like birds on the seas they suddenly flew all the way over to the ship and landed on the ship after he's done praying and then uh, the passengers and him caught a few of them and ate them a few of them Like, okay. it was um, interesting that God sent those birds to the ship. Yeah. After... Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing the story with us. It's 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 so much similar to what we are dealing with right now, right? So it's so much similar to the story we are learning. So thank you so much uh, um Sandy for sharing that with us. Next Akash. So I I think I don't remember it but in my life mm-hmm. not in my life but in the bible so I think the story of Esther or the story of David and Goliath because God works in mysterious ways because when a small boy couldn't defeat a um, Goliath because he was he was saying bad things about God right Yes. So that was mysterious that he a small boy could just kill Goliath and God helped him. So yeah. I think like a little shepherd boy killing a huge giant like Goliath with stones like that is one of the mysterious ways God would. We cannot understand it like how can he ever go to a war without his sword or you know without his training or whatever without being strong but he just took out goliath with a small stone so that is somehow uh, yes that is a very good example next um prami so when i wonder in the bible when noah when noah was praying god said make a big boat make a big boat because i'm going to make a flood and he said i'm sorry because my I'm angry and then so uh Noah did what God wanted to do and Noah ob- obeyed God and did what he wanted him to do so when he when he obeyed they when he made a flood 
he said and he gave them all the mammals and all the big animals and they were and they were perfect in the boat and then god said i'm going to i'm going to start the flood and mm-hmm. by everyone was saved except the other people who were not in the boat and not a boat god yeah nova obeyed god and despite of the you know like terrible flood it's mysterious i don't understand how just nova and the animals were saved while the rest of the world was destroyed that is one of god's many mysterious ways good good one serena so we have three things to say one is um, a couple of months ago i was crying uh, i don't want to tell why but i was crying but then i get something i want mm-hmm. so so then the, i th- i think i already told this but i want to tell it again because no one was there that time uh so suddenly i went to ba- that to take a bath and my mother was in an indian call prayer so then suddenly i came out of the bathroom because i was finished and i wiped off and then my mom shown a bible verse that say i will give you what i what you desire because that's what i want and the second thing is when saul rule of the rule over the israel the philistines tried to attack them so they did not have any weapons uh, only there was only some only two weapons one with jonathan his son and with the other soldier so so then he said don't worry don't worry father jonathan said and then he went to battle because jonathan means a gift of, from god so then when the, he jonathan had a servant who uh, holds his weapon he in the war his servant gave it to, to jonathan and then jonathan threw threw it at the philistines and then 300 philistines died died for one weapon and then all the soldiers got shocked and the philistine soldiers ran, ran away but mm-hmm. so then the 300 people who died with the weapon the the israelite soldiers took those weapons and threw it at the 300 300 300 people died okay yes uh thank you so much sir you know for both the both the things whatever happened in your life and in the bible as well yeah pretty much i don't think um for one sword or so for one weapon 300 people would die practically but again god's works are mysterious right so yep um i can think of so many things you know just from the lessons we've learned recently like the story of gideon right uh, and what he did with the wool he was asking god to just wet the wool and nothing and not the land beside, around it so you know like just not gideon you know we have samson um pretty much most of the stories we can read again and again and again and testify that god works in mysterious ways and the takeaway point is god really cares for us he knows what's the best for us and when he tells us or asks us to do something we have to obey like all these good people in the bible did right and we are seeing right then how their obedience was rewarded like for example nova he was obedient and they were saved from the flood like right now elijah he was obedient and he was being provided by god himself right so obedience is rewarded by god richly so whenever he asks us to do something we do it no matter what even though you do not understand even though you cannot guess um how it's going to work you just obey him blindly right and then our god is a god who works in mysterious ways so um 
he is gonna take care of the situation, whatever it is. So that is the take home from the first part, from the first half of the lesson. There's a second half, like apart from Elijah, there is also a simple woman in the same chapter. We can learn a ton about. Um, her story is from uh, from verse seven through the end. So we see a widow at a place called Zarephath. Um, what happens is next after Elijah, you know, um, lives in these brooks and he was eating from the ravens and drinking from the spring. When then God says after some time, God says that, you know, you know what? Um, I think you're done here. Go to a particular place, um, you know, in the region of Sidon. So these are all the places, uh, names of the places. So um, go to this particular place and there you will find a widow, a widow, guys. Like she has no husband. She is all alone. So I have told the widow to take care of you. So you go there. Isn't it strange? Like little children, they are weak. So we have to take care of them. Poor people, they don't have a ton of money. So we have to take care of them, like give them money, clothes or whatever we can. Widows, because they don't have a head on the household and they don't have husbands and they really don't have a job or something to provide for their family, they might be a little weak. So we have to take care of them. Now, strangely enough, remember there was a drought in Israel, there was no food, there was no water. And in general, in general, even though there's everything, um, even though people are flourishing, the houses of widows, because they don't have, um, you know, the husbands, right? So the houses of widows are supposed to be, most of the times they don't have a job or something like that. So they are supposed to be poor, like they will be poor in general because they cannot provide for the families by themselves. Now, strangely, God comes and tells that it was fine, right? It was happy. The ravens were coming and feeding him. He was alone, uh, happily uh, spending time with God. He was in nature. And then God comes and tells to Elijah to go to a widow's place. We don't know yet if she has enough food for herself and her family. And God has directed the widow to provide for Elijah. We see Elijah's obedience again. We see Elijah's discipline again. It, if it was like you and me, I don't know what we'd do. Suppose, imagine like we don't have water anywhere here in the US, like everywhere, um, there's no water and we have we we have already drank the last bottle of water that's with us and then when we are praying for god to give us more water god says that you know there's a big desert in arizona let can you please go there because i'll give you water there so does it make any sense we've been praying for, there's no water we just drank the last bottle of water we were praying god to give us water and instead of taking us to you know like a river or a sea or something like that god take god asks us to go to a desert and says that i'll give you water there it doesn't make sense right like even this thing elijah was fine elijah was being fed elijah was drinking water but then god said to go to a widow's place so how is it even possible that the widow can provide for her family and for elijah Elijah, I don't think he had this entire thought process in mind, like, like a theme, just blindly follow God, just blindly obey God. When he asks you to do something, just do it. So Elijah did it anyway. So he went to the widow and he met her. And like we were thinking, it's not like this is a super rich widow or um, just because she has to provide to Elijah, God has blessed her so much that he, she just found money out of nowhere and she was about able to um, feed everyone. No, when Elijah went, she was actually really poor. She didn't even have to eat or drink for herself or for her family. So then Elijah saw her and he asked her to bring 
her a jar of water like to bring her uh, to bring him a um, little bit water and after that he also asked for food for the water part she said um okay and she she was going in to bring it but for the food part she has nothing right like she has very little oil and very little flour you know she i think that was the last batch she had maybe she can make you know very small bread for her and for her son it's not even it's not even going to be enough for them and when elijah asked her to bring food she honestly just said that up front um she just said that i don't have any bread this is the last batch i am i have so can you ever imagine like giving away to someone the last thing you have for yourself like the last dollar the last cup of water the last pizza slice i don't know whatever it is you know the last very last thing if that's over you might not even have that for yourself anymore but you have to give it to somebody else see how interesting the widow has a son right this is the last piece of bread and maybe water i don't know this is the last piece of bread she has and <laughs> the widow and the son may die out of hunger if they if they don't have if they don't have any food from the next day but when elijah asked she gave it to him anyway isn't it strange like how obedient and how nice she was elijah heard her story and he said don't worry about it just go do whatever i tell you with whatever oil you have with whatever flour you have just make bread for me and bring it to me just do it again it doesn't make sense that she would give the last bits of whatever she has um to a man of god instead of keeping it for herself and her son but god is a god that works in mysterious ways um again we see that here god <laughs> blesses the jar where there's oil and uh, where there's this flower and the oil just keeps coming up you know the flower it's never it's like a bottomless pit the more bread she makes the more flower comes the more oil she uses the more the oil is being again replaced so she never ran out of oil and she never ran out of flower but remember guys now that we have the bible and you know like we know everything we have a lot of videos and we are you know we are reading this as a story and we know that oh okay this is going to happen or this happen but that you know did not know what was coming but she obeyed anyway right so whenever you show obedience god rewards and sometimes in mysterious ways so she obeyed elijah she made him the bread and the oil and the flour so basically her food never ran out away again for so many several coming years right see how these people were actually obeying god when they had nothing or maybe when they were weak or maybe they might think they are little or they have nothing or you know in a really uh, strange ways god is asking them to do something totally against common sense but they were obeying anyway and can you see guys how god is rewarding them immediately for their obedience so from today's class we learn from two people Elijah and the widow at Zarephath both of them they obeyed God instantly they didn't think you know our my favorite memory verse is trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding if you lean on your understanding all of this might you know doesn't make sense and um so if you if i was thinking with my mind i would think 
okay um so a man came out of nowhere and he's asking for my last piece of bread so maybe if i have this bread i can feed myself and my son and we might live for a week or more but how can i give my last piece of son of uh, bread to this man but no don't think with your mind lean on on your understanding trust in the god with all your heart so how trusting in god with all your heart looks like so instead of all this processing in my mind i think okay i know it, this doesn't make sense i know there's a possibility that i might not have food tomorrow but now god has asked me to do this now i have to give this away or now i have to go to this place it might not make sense now but one thing i know for sure is i always have to be obedient to god and now that god is asking me to do this let me do this and god will take care of what happens next right so if i think like this it's trusting the lord with all my heart so there are two people here we can see elijah and the widow both of them were really obedient to god and then god did reward them right and in the end in the um, end of this chapter there's one more miracle that god does um the son of the widow dies and because she gave elijah a place to live um elijah was with them at that time so when the son dies um elijah goes and prays over him and i cannot even think about all the miracles and how god does it that the son did come back to life from the dead right so that is one miracle the we um, the lord does on behalf of the widow um because elijah was there he prayed for the boy anyway so that is today's lesson we've learned chapter 17 this week i think it's really easy it's only one chapter for you guys to read so that's today's class questions about class first and then in general questions we can do later any questions about the class uh, serena why will not god not if suppose we did something good why will god not reward us uh, quickly like they did for elijah and uh, lady rewards can not always be quick and cannot always be seen right there are certain people who stood for in the bible and throughout in history or even today there are certain people who are standing for good and who are being obedient but instead of you know like the blessings we see here they are being um you know they have some negative outcomes but that doesn't mean that god isn't rewarding remember one thing earth is not our place right like we are travelers here whatever we have all the riches all the rewards all the gifts we have in heaven so whenever you do something nice it's really up to jesus that he has to decide he will decide if he will reward you right here right now or if he'll reward you in heaven okay so there is definitely going to be a reward but only jesus decides if the reward is going to be immediate and quick like we've learned um here or if the reward is going to be in heaven you know after we go up there so it's really up to jesus um uh, how how we should be rewarded it is for sure that we will be rewarded but we just don't know when and how okay and most important thing is we don't obey because we want to be rewarded right you don't expect reward i mean it's okay um it's okay to know that you will be rewarded and it's okay to keep um longing for the reward it's not wrong but the whole point of obedience is not to be rewarded that's not the whole point you obey god because you love god okay so a gift or reward is something that the other person gives you right like you're throwing a birthday party and you don't ask people for gifts 
they they bring it to you anyway so you don't ask okay get me that get get me this gift get me that gift you you don't ask people for gifts they just bring it to you the same way you don't ask for rewards god will see how you behave god will see um you know your your behavior and your attitude and everything and he rewards because he like what you did okay you cannot ask you know i did particular thing you have to reward me you cannot ask that so the whole point of obedience is not to keep a heart on the reward but the process itself the process of obedience itself you are obedient to god because you love him right and for the reward spot like i said you will definitely be rewarded but we just don't know yet if you'll be rewarded immediately or in the heaven akash why why did the boy die and how did the, i mean not how but why did the boy die he just fell sick he fell sick and it just got worse and worse but did god have a reason to do that of course um god doesn't do anything with reason right so if the boy had died and if elijah hadn't prayed and if the boy didn't come back to life we never knew who the boy was right see the story of the boy was written in bible along with the story of elijah isn't that great and now whoever reads this passage is thoroughly encouraged to pray like that so this boy is a living testament he 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 was like a good testament to the lord that impossible things and miraculous things happen with god so maybe that was the reason maybe god wanted to teach you and me maybe god wanted to teach us that he can really do anything through this boy okay that is no why god did it we can never exactly know what was going on in god's mind because we are just human but we can just take a guess and my guess is that you know like if there was if not, none of this happened we never would have even known that the widow had a boy and no one would be really encouraged to pray in such a way that the impossible thing would happen like dead people raising to life again so yep yeah so that's it for today's uh, story i really would like yeah 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 we we we'll, we'll still have like a minute so i really would um would encourage you guys to read the chapter it's just one chapter so yeah so general questions or any doubts we don't have any cracks sagini aunty sarina i want to show you something yeah you wanted to show something so yeah yeah my grandma bought me this bible that has my name on it sarina bukli yeah it's beautiful so just in case you guys do not know there's four four models so in that models m a r d e l s models it's a christian store it's all over us so even in dallas there's one store, like even in irving there's one store so there if you if you uh, if you buy, you don't have to buy the bible there if you take your bible they will write down your name for $5 for example on my bible i have my family name so this they do for $5 oh. i think i have my name on almost all of my bibles so um if you want if you want names on your bibles you can just go to that you can ask your parents to take to that store it it, it gets really cheap um let me text you and do they do it for any book we want yes they will do it for any book you want and for keychains last time we last time i had my name on my keychain okay I'm not sure if they do on keychains but they do it on books like especially bibles. You have a lot of cool stuff to check out too like it's a christian store so there's a ton of cool stuff. We only can go inside right? We cannot go like a drive through like everything. I think you can drop it off for a, you just need to call the store and ask if you can drop off your bible if they can write your name but you have your name anywhere right so 
<laughs> Did we do any graphics on our books? Like any pictures on our books? Mm. Yeah, um, you can. So if you get the chance to go in and check, there's a ton and ton and there is a lot you can. Uh, so there's a whole school section in the back. So there's, there's a lot of crafts and, uh, you know, there are a lot of things you can find. So you can just get something you like and you can just get your name imprinted on that as well. I don't know how it works. You just have to talk to them. You know, if someone, you know, just in case if someone wants I'm... to go to a Christian store and check it out, it's a pretty cool store. And if someone wants their names on the Bible, I think you can just call them up. And because Corona with everything going on with Corona, I don't think it's really safe to go to a store. So really, you have to really check with your parents about that. But if you want the want your name on the Bible, I think you can just call them up and ask. If you drop off their Bi if you drop off your Bibles, uh, you can just ask if they'll do it. Oh, there's Effie. It's actually, it's actually closed. It's actually I searched it on it's Google Model. It, told you it's a Christian store, right? So they, they are closed on Sunday. Oh, yeah, because uh, they have to go to worship. Yes, they have to go to worship, so they'll close on Sunday. Oh, I found it. Yeah. I found oh. it under you, Google. I Googled it. Yeah, I Googled it. Oh, there is one in Arlington. Hey, go um, go don't have, there's no obligation. That you have yeah, to go. I just gave, stop, stop. I just gave the name of a really cool Christian store for you. You can just check it out whenever you have time. You can talk to your parents about it, okay? Next, JC. You want the store name? And the address. Um, it's address, you can... Uh, yeah, you can just... Ask your mom to type it out in Google. You can um, find the address. But the name of the store is Mardell's. M-A-R-D-E-L. -E huh? Okay. It's in the chat box, Stacey. If you want to. Hmm? But it's only showing books that we can read. It's not showing... Anything like um, we can... It is like a bookstore. There are a ton of books. But so the store basically has... It's a Christian store, right? So there are a lot of Bibles. There are a ton oh, of Bibles. They have a, there are like... so many books. There's home decor. You know, like whatever you... Oh, you get. Home decor and personal stuff. Oh, I know. You can uh, you can buy Bible journals or Bible stuffs, highlighter or whatever, and then you have a whole school section, okay? So you can buy out some crafts or whatever you like. You can I think you can you can just browse the store online and order for a pickup. I don't know. You really need to talk to your parents about this. So when I searched it up, uh, it shows everything is closed. Yeah, it's closed on Sunday. Because they're Christian, they have to go to work. I know, my, I know. So we can't go today. No. Yeah, but you can so just tomorrow. check it out. throughout the week. Um, just check it out, and if if there's something you like, you can ask your parents, and you can schedule for a pickup, or maybe go next Saturday or something. Is it huh. like next yeah. Saturday is Halloween? Actually, next Saturday is Halloween. Aha. But they're not, they're Christian. How is it supposed to be cool? And plus, we don't have ho holidays on Halloween. No, yeah. I mean, next Saturday. This Saturday is Halloween. This Saturday. Okay, Akansh, can you please pray? We'll wind up today's session. The Holy Gracious Father, thank you for giving this wonderful day. Thank you for giving all the things you have given to us. Please help us in everything we need to do. Please help us. Please help. Thank you for all the things you have done. Thank you for all the mysterious things you have done. Please help us to check things and please help us to. Please help this coronavirus and please help the doctors and the scientists figure out the vaccine for coronavirus. And please help everyone in Jesus' name pray. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you so much, Ava. So that's it, guys, for this week. Let me show you my prayer book. Oh, that's. I wrote my name and on the back I wrote Lamborghini. Kind of. That's right. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.